Greetings, Marshier, and welcome to episode 207 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we're going to expand the circuit bus and prepare for green circuits, and also design the setup that'll build them. Enjoy. We want to try to keep the alignment of all of the belts, but I also don't want to just extend all of the belts down, because then that's a lot of extra resources that we may not need. Like, one advantage of having a belt that just stops somewhere is that tells you this is the last place we needed this item. So you can uh, kind of figure out what items you can remove from the bus if you find out it's way down here and you haven't needed it in a long time. So I don't want to straight up connect everything. Let's just copy the end here. Get some concrete. That gives us an idea of its size. And we want to kind of place it more or less in the middle. Looks like one of the longest things is right here, so we can kind of use that as a, a judge to kind of put it in the middle. Oh, something like this. That'll give us our alignment. Let's use this to kind of figure out where the alignment of the giant belt bus will be. Then we can roll this back. And uh, it looks like there will be a bit of an inversion here. Where, with this bus, the copper is the closest to the top. But when it goes around, it's now going to be the closest to the bottom. Which is fine. It's just a different way of doing things. And we could fix it, but that would require <laughs> a lot of undergrounds that I don't want to deal with. So there we go, that's the alignment. This one would go right there. And now we have a whole bunch of hazard concrete to lay down. Just to get everything lined up. Oh, out to here ought to be fine for now. Alright. That should be our five groups of ten belts each. Looks pretty good. Nice in the middle. So I think we're finally set up here, so we can start working on those green circuits. So let's go back to the bus so we have access to our resources, and let's make a build. I notice Crystals is running a tiny bit. I wonder if it made a drone request. Well, not much is going on here. The only thing this setup needs is that methane gas, and I decided it wasn't really worth the effort to send the methane gas up here just to avoid having this run, because this does create the byproducts, which do allow us to make our rubber, so it's probably better to take the excess methane gas and turn it into plastic or fuel instead, rather than trying to send it back here. We are going to have the fiberglass boards delivered by train, so we need to turn those into the superior circuit boards, and the process is similar to white circuits, just bigger. And if you look at these numbers, they're all quite small. So there's really no throughput limitations to this. Just size. And it's interesting that this setup required the use of assembly machine 2s to use the liquids. But according to this, we can do it with an electronics assembly machine. But is that actually true? Looks like it. Perhaps we didn't have access to these at the time. And we couldn't do it this way, because that sure makes it a lot smaller. So we probably want to mash a bunch of these in here. And because of the pipe, there's not a lot of room in the middle. We're going to have one input and one output, which is going to fill this other side. So it would be something like this, and then there would be belts. Which means no room for any power poles. So this might be a situation for using some substations every once in a while. It would uh, take up a square. But, it does make the power go farther. And we can extend that there to give us our total of 10. And that substation will also extend quite far. Oh, it can't be flipped. Well, put it there. We can extend it to the end and actually... 
we can plop that in there as well. We can't flip it, so we have to put this in the correct orientation. So resources would come down and then go back up. And I guess we would have copper and silver on each side. Let's uh, extend this here so we get power. Where are they going? <laughs> oh, probably to give us some more landfill. And then that extends outwards. So can we reuse this over here? Yes, but let's flip it this way so it looks the same. There we go. Now we have this, which is something that can be copied a bit. Like right here, and right here. But we can get rid of the substations. And how far does that substation reach? Not quite the whole way. And how many buildings is that? 65. Well, we might be able to put some power poles just on the end there, because I don't really want to make this wide. I'd rather make it narrow and deep, because we do have a limited amount of space here now, because we've chosen how big this bus can be artificially. So, if we can make it narrow and long to extend to where the other bus is, that would be a more efficient use of space. So, doing this again, like this would probably be the best use of space. And it looks like the power would overlap a bit. So we can leave two spaces in here. Put another set. Which gives us 136. So we can stop right there. Technically it would have been a little bit more compact to have the pipes be the thing that are on the outside. Because that way we'd be doubling up on this double belt rather than uh, on the pipe which is a single. But we are using the substation to power everything though. Which is kind of an element of this so. probably want to just stick with it like it is. No room for lights, but what can you do? I guess just sort of uh, place them on the outside there. And the choppers. Copper, copper. Silver, silver. Then the input can kind of be combined and go in there. Then we need to figure out a way to combine these belts here. I'm just going to chop this off for now. Because I think we can do something like that. That seems to be pretty good. And we just need an absolute ton of productivity modules here. Probably could just use this uh, updater here for this. So we don't have to place them all completely manually. And the robots can't quite reach there, so we'll fill those in automatically. And then they should be, yep, going up there to get the rest of the modules. Let's see, we do need to connect the fluids. Otherwise, I think we're good with that. Now we need to attach all of the components. Let's just use this spot over here for planning. Clear out some trees while we're here. Alright, let's go through the various components here. We'll start with the end condition, which is making the logic boards where everything has to be assembled. 
because we don't want to put any of these electronics components on the bus. I guess robots are on their way for that. Just because uh, it's a lot of items, so they're better to be produced next to the circuit board that we're trying to make. And we probably want to use uh, more substations for this due to the compactness that it will allow. So it would be something like this, but they can overlap a bit. We'll worry about that in a second. Let's just get all this set up. So we have six items that need to get in and out, which makes it kind of complicated. Five inputs, and then one output. We could do this with three belts here by having an input and an output on the same belt, but that's kind of weird and I don't really like to do that unless you really care about smashing stuff in. So it could be something like this. And uh, I'll put an extra one in here because we know that it can overlap a bit. It just needs to be attached to the next one, which it would be if we copy this, so. As far as numbers per machine, these are all pretty slow because we need so many machines because of the productivity modules. And I guess that's an advantage of productivity modules is you never really have to worry about inserters limiting you. And then we'll input on this side, which will probably just be the basic circuit boards. So it'll look a little cleaner that way. And we're out. Bring me items. Oh, I guess it makes sense. It doesn't really take that much to get out of range of the bots. Looks like we're done with all that biter research. Hopefully we're good on materials now. So now we have to flip this around. Fortunately, it doesn't like to be flipped. But we can kind of do it. There we go. Get that side flipped. And that side flipped. Let's remove this substation. And then this whole thing should be able to go right here. And it looks like there is enough overlap for one more row if we copied it. Because there would be four spaces in the middle and we would need exactly four. So then we kind of need to figure out size again. 166. We have 35. Well, certainly, we'd want to quadruple it up. So let's leave that space in the middle. And then right here, we need to put that there. And then one more row in the middle. But we don't need the substations. So what is that looking like now? 164. So pretty close. It really only needs one more row. And that power can't quite reach there, so that kind of makes sense. Where we'll need to have some power poles to finish it off. And I guess we can drop some lights. Next to the substations here. And we need this covered with productivity modules. Then we need to get the resources in. I guess they'd come in through the top and it would be a bit of something like this. So we probably want to build this somewhere else and just kind of attach it all in the end. Well, the solder can come in pretty much immediately, but the other components, no. But because they are 15 and 15, we can put those on one belt and be 30 items, and then the other one can be 30 items on the other belt. So we can do, like, the transistors come in through here, then the integrated electronics, the resistors come in there, and then they kind of combine and get mixed in. Which is quite tricky. So we have uh, a lot going on here, so let's move all these up. So those are the first thing we need to combine. Let's just make them the combined elements from over here, and then we'll worry about uh, making it all look pretty and compact in the end here. 
And those items would already be half and half on each belt, so they would be able to be split cleanly like this. And then the other ones would need to be mixed in. Push these up for now and then worry about squishing them later. Where it would come in... Actually, we could do... something like this. Where it, like, comes in like that. So we can do... this, and then this would come up from here somewhere. And then that underground would jump across. And this one would jump across. I think that mixes in the transistors. So then the solder would come in through these guys up top. Which comes out of a single assembly machine. So we'll worry about positioning that later. Because we also have an input of these boards, which would probably come from right over here. And instead of sending four whole lines from the bus, we could just do one. And I wonder... If we could do something like this. Since there is quite a bit of empty space in the middle here. Okay, it's uh, getting pretty complicated, but that's kind of how some of these belts are sometimes. There's a lot going in and going out here. And now we can do the solder, which can be from either side, but it might work out well to do it from this side here. Because then we can do this. So we just need to come in at this point. And it's one assembling machine. That can always create some problems with throughput, with inserters. But maybe if we use two sets that can bind a belt. And then some of them are the nearsighted variety. And the input can come from up there or something. And this can go in somewhere. We also have the outputs as well. There isn't really a lot of space on the bottom here to do that. At least going to the right. Going to the left, there might be some space. Yeah, seems to be. Man, I really hope all this works. <laughs> Where you go through this effort to make a real compact thing of belts that you can't really check ahead of time. Uh, it would be kind of annoying and embarrassing if uh, these are all messed up and everything goes everywhere. <laughs> but I think that allows us to have an output here that will go up. We can save some undergrounds by doing that, but I think that does it. Yep, robot crashed. Keep thinking it's the the blighters, but it never seems to be. It's just the uh, robots these days doing the damage. And uh, we don't have to smash this in here too tight. We'll just do that. So, that should cover everything where we have the solder being made and delivered, the circuit boards being delivered, the completed circuit boards being removed, and on the right, a combination of electronics components and integrated electronics. On the left, just transistors. Because they need to be mixed in with the solder coming from over here. 
And that should be everything. And actually, the spacing turned out pretty well. Like, we could really only space it one more down, and that doesn't really seem necessary. So, I'm thinking we're pretty good. So now, we need to do another setup that will deliver our components here. And let's go with transistors. Now, we've made transistors before. So we may not need to completely reinvent the wheel here. Especially if it's the same type of machines. And let's go over there and check. So it looks like, at least for this setup, we've got a line of them. And something tells me they will make pretty much 30. Yeah, we upgraded them partially with modules. So their numbers are a little different, so we'll have to adjust those. But the concept is similar. Although we might want to try using the substations to get more in here in a smaller space. The idea is kind of the same though. Where on one side we have the silver wire, the plastic, and the other we need to make the silicon wafers. So we can upgrade some of these machines and do what we need to. So I'm not too worried there. So let's see what the block actually looks like. It's actually pretty similar when you consider the productivity modules in here, where it's just uh, three machines because they've been upgraded. Well, let's just grab it. And then we'll uh, pull from it and modify. Let's see, these wires still need to reach. Unfortunately, they cannot from this side. So we'll have to do that. And productivities. Otherwise, everything looks good there. So let's just, uh, since we're going to be placing these one block at a time anyway, it doesn't really matter where we put them. So this is as good a place as any. And actually, I'll place this over here as sort of the blueprint of what we're trying to work on here. Doesn't matter if the bots actually place them or not. <laughs> or if we do. We probably don't need to go nearly as big as this, just because it's not as many machines. So, I'll just do it one section at a time here. And these are actually assembly machine ones, which might explain why the other setup was so much bigger. Because now... use our four modules. Let's see with this we can do five machines. It looks like they're set to insert on the same side of the belt. So we want to do inside outside inside outside. Then a substation the opposing side and another four. So hopefully if I got that right they should alternate properly. And that gives us 10 of our 30. It's kind of a waste to just go in a straight line like this. I guess we could. It just seems kind of weird using substations like that, but I suppose it's still more efficient. I mean, we could put these on the side, I guess, and cover everything, but that seems kind of weird. But also, we don't want to make this wider than we have to. But doing... 30 of them might be too many. And we actually need slightly more than that. 30 is easier to to do as far as the belts are concerned, though. So, if we had something like this, what does it look like? Well, it's not that much bigger than this other setup. But you can see how it's technically too wide, that depending on where it goes, it wouldn't fit. Most places it would fit, and we certainly could make it fit by moving things, but you can kind of see where it's like, well, it's a little long. So, we probably don't want to do it that way. So, sorry bots, but changed my mind. We want to do two sets, then a third. 
we'll need to move everything around here, but let's just see now how many machines that is. 30. By putting two more rows in here, we can get it covered. And hopefully it's still doing the alternating thing, which it seems to be. Let's see if we did it the same. It would be like this. And then we need the input side. This one doesn't matter nearly as much. We just kind of want it to match the other side. So it needs to pull from this square right here. Which it'll do if we do this. That might help the visualization a little bit. The nears and fars probably got messed up, but in some situations it doesn't really matter. Specifically on the ones where they're inserting on both sides. So I'll just replace all these just to make sure they're set to the standard way. It's on this side where you got to watch out, and it looks like it's not quite set the same. <laughs> Gotta have it be symmetrical. And there we go. Those should be set correctly. We've got 38 of them. We don't really need 38. So we can cut one of these out of here. There we go, 35. And then like over here, we have to get the supporting components in and orient them correctly. Where the output will go up and then mix in somewhere. And it looks like it mixes in fairly high. So, can worry about that here. Let's see exactly how high it is if we want to try to line it up these squares here. There's five gaps. So it would be like that. Though they probably don't need to be red because we can't really uh, put multiple inserters on here it might have problems maxing out the belt otherwise. So we probably do want to stick with red. Probably could have did some uh, belt combining here to make this smaller because these numbers are fairly small, but oh well, it has been placed. It's too late. We can do some plastic in here. I don't know, it might look straighter doing it this way. Some plastic goes in there, and then we need the silver wire and the silicon wafers being split across here. The number's pretty close to yellow, but let's just use a red to be safe. So the regular, near, then we can put both types on this one, and we can be super compact by bringing in the resources in that space. So then there's the wafers, that would come in from up there, and probably do something similar on this side, for the wire, we're going to have like an input and then an output. Then we need to make sure that we can reach everything. And it looks like we can. One advantage of not doing things on each side of the belt is it makes doing this style of stitching a little easier. Because we don't have to worry about sides or anything like that. And let's see, the number is fairly small. Two reds auto work here. We are trying to grab from the same side. So let's uh, get this in here. Silver wire on one side. And we'll do two reds. On this side. Let's double check the work here. Silicon comes in, gets turned into wafers, split and delivered. Silver wire comes in, gets cut and delivered. Plastic is just sent straight in 
through here, and then the output goes up and to the left. And then if this is all sized correctly, it should line up. There we go. Where the machines can stay nice and square and everything goes into each other. Well, that side's good. Now we need to do the other, which is going to be a combination of the electronic components and the new integrated electronics. Neither of which are very complicated, it's just more stuff to do. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.